Hello class, today we're going to go ahead and learn about projectile motion. Well, what I want you to know about this is that if we are given some object and we're going to go ahead and throw it up into the sky, because of gravity, if after a certain amount of time, it's going to go ahead and come back to us. So, we can go ahead and... We can go ahead and see how this object is going to go ahead and move if we go ahead and track it using horizontal and vertical movement. So if I'm given an initial velocity, let's say a speed, um, a feet per second or meters per second, um, we can find that as this right here, velocity uh, not or v initial as they are seen in some physics problems. Now. If we go ahead and throw this object, we can go ahead and see that if it goes and moves from the horizontal, we can see that there's going to be some theta that we can go ahead and use. So that's the angle uh, with the horizontal, meaning the ground or pretty much anything that is um, flat. Now, initial height. When you read a word problem, there is some confusion with this, but it's not that bad. Initial height just pretty much tells you that object... Um, that object uh, what height was it thrown so like let's pretend in this example uh some person is kicking a kicking a um, my horrible person my heart uh, this person is going to go ahead and kick um a kickball its height would be zero right and if as they kick it the theta would be whatever angle it goes off the ground now however if this person was shooting a basketball the initial height would change now it would be the height at which it was released so at the height at which it was released at its fingertips right um time well remember we're working with parametric equations so time is what we don't know so that's going to be our variable so remember after one second where how far from you horizontally is that object or in one second how far is it vertically from you so keep in mind t will be your variable now Gravity, it honestly depends on what you are working with. If you're working in, um, with gravity in meters, so it's going to be 9.8 meters uh, per second. Uh, or if you're working with um, feet, it should be 32 feet per second. So keep in mind that this is what gravity is going to affect on you. Now, my question to you is, if you are... Uh, moving an object horizontally, how much will a gravity affect it? Well, uh, considering that we're just moving horizontally, uh, gravity won't affect you as much as it does for vertical movement. So you can see why in the sign, in this movement right here, gravity is affecting us um, at that speed. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue with the lesson. So we got Leonard is practicing free throws for an upcoming basketball game. He releases the ball with an initial velocity of 24 feet per second. So this right here is the information that I'm telling you is going to be velocity initial or V naught is 24 feet. Um, it says the angle at which the person is throwing the basketball is going to be 53 uh, degrees. Now, this is very interesting. The horizontal distance from the free throw line to the front of the rim is 13 feet. So we got a person. This guy's way better. They broke his ankles. Um, so we got a person that is going to shoot a free throw. Let's pretend it looks like so. So the distance from him to the front of the rim is 13 feet. And then the vertical distance from the rim. So the rim is right here to the height would be 10 feet now the front of the rim is two feet from the backboard so what does that tell us in regards to the size of the rim this picture is horrible so what I want you to start thinking about is um, what is the length of the rim well that should be two feet according to this and he re releases a shot at 4.7 feet from the ground well, that's pretty much his fingertips. So from here to here, it's 4.75. Very careful. He is not um, four, uh, four, third, four feet and 
0.75 feet tall. So let's go ahead and put that in our picture. So we should have something like this. I know that's curry, but ideally we should have this information. The speed at which he is throwing the ball. Uh, the angle with the horizontal being parallel to the ground. The 13 feet in distance. The 2 feet of the rim. And the 10 feet from the rim to the, to the height. Okay, now... What I need you to know is that you're going to go use all this information to substitute into our equations of our projectile motion. Now, that being said, guys, um, be very careful. You don't have to memorize these. These will be given to you. Uh, be very careful on height. I believe in the lesson, a lot of people didn't understand when the height initial was. A lot of us want to say 10 feet, but remember, we're talking about the object, in this case, the basketball. So all this information has to be regarding the basketball. So in this case, I don't want to see 10 feet onto the height because that's the height of the rim, not the height of the ball being released. Next, um, gravity. Be very careful. We have meters per second um, for gravity, and we also have height. I'm sorry, feet. Notice how everything here is in feet. So we use um, 32 feet per second in this scenario. So go ahead and pause the video. Substitute the information to the equations. Keep in mind, t is our only variable. So x and t. I'm sorry, x and y is res with respect to t, so you should have x equals t something and y equals t something. You should have come up with the following. Your calculator needs to be in degrees, and you should have, have this information. Now, my question to you is, we've learned a lot about parametric equations, but we will be given a, a calculator in these scenarios since these are all not nice numbers. 53 degrees is not something we, sh we have memorized. Okay, so my question to you is, at what t does the function, okay, let me keep it like this, um, what is the requirement for this person to make the basket? There is two requirements. There is a requirement where this person meets the certain a distance horizontally. And there's a certain distance this person has to meet vertically okay so in order for Leonard to make the basket horizontally what requirements does he have to meet so keep thinking about that okay so if I was to make this basket for sure it has to go 13 feet from me but does it have to go exactly only 13 feet well, remember the rim size is 2 feet so it goes from 13 feet to plus 2 so the ball must be a distance of 13 through 15. Does that make sense? Now vertically, what is the vertical distance this ball has to meet? Well, in order for it to make the basket, it has to be a height of 10 feet. So around something like this. So it has to be 10 feet. Okay. Now my question to you is, Given this information, what can we do? Well, a lot of students in class wanted to use and solve um, to substitute. That did work, but for some of us, it only gave um, one solution. Um, me, I went the basic graphical approach. So I went ahead and found out if I can see, well, it's not the scale, but if I can assume there is a y, there's time that where this ball reaches the 10 feet, we can go ahead and graph our equation of y. So we're going to graph whatever this is and we're gonna graph y equals 10 because we need to find the time at which the parabola intersects with the line y equals 10 so you should have come up with the following now this is the graph for y and this is the graph for y equals 10 so according to this According to this, we have these two times when t equals when t equals 0.424 seconds and when t equals 0.774 seconds. Well, let's remind ourselves why is this important? Well, this is important because 
because my marker doesn't work. Because because that is when the time is ten height. I'm sorry, that's when the basket is ten height. Now, hopefully, we can do a little bit of critical thinking here and notice that if I went ahead and just released my ball from my fingertips, there is going to be a parabola shape, this one and this one. So if I just release the ball at 0.42 seconds, the ball's probably going like so. Is there a chance that I already made the basket that at that time? Well, probably not because it hasn't gone a very far distance. It just went a couple seconds at 0.4. 774 the ball is on its way down and it has traveled more distance so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it has traveled the necessary distance so that's how I went ahead and eliminated uh, that that information so I'm not gonna be using this one because um, it, I just barely left my hand so we're gonna use when t equals 0.774 seconds the ball is 10 feet in the vertical from in the vertical in, in height now does that guarantee i made the ball well no we still have to check that when i sub t into my x my equation my horizontal equation it has to be between 13 and 15. yes so let's go ahead and try that. If I substitute into my equation, my equation for t, which says it is, I'm sorry, for x, my horizontal, t equals, I'm sorry, x equals t times 24 times cosine of 53, I have that x equals point, what was it in this case? This right here. Oh, I believe I just got rid of my marker. Great. Yes, it's right here. Uh, T, we just said it was 0.7. Great. Let's zoom out in this thing. Is that better? Okay, just to confirm. Um, I cannot use 0.424 because it's too close. It just left my hand. But I can use 0.774 because it is a height of 10. And I can go ahead and substitute into my equation. So let's go ahead and do that. 0.774 times 24 because that's my velocity. Cosine of 53. Perfect. Okay. Now... This right here, if I put it into my calculator, I get that x equals 11 something, 53, 11 feet. So does he make the basket? My height is 10 feet, vertical, but my horizontal is 11 and a half feet. So according to this, I did not meet the necessary requirements to go ahead and make the basket. Does that make sense? So did I make the shot according to this? Did Leonard make the shot? No, because my horizontal is 11, my vertical is 10, and the requirements was 13 through 15. So that is one approach is how to answer the question. I know it's a lot of information, but it shouldn't be that bad. Now, if like in class, I noticed a lot of us were struggled with that, uh, but it, it isn't that bad. Another approach that we can do is find out, well, just how we did in the other homework. If I pick a couple of T values, T equals 0.1 second, T equals 0.3 seconds, 0.5 seconds, 0.7 seconds. And 0.9 seconds, I could eventually do that. But what I need you to keep in mind is we still need to go ahead and solve for when, for when the ball 
is at this here 0.774 seconds because that's exactly when the ball is 10 feet so this one we already know is 10 feet so it should have probably mm, is 10 feet because we went ahead and solved for it the other time but if I go ahead and substitute each t value into my x's so into the x's I will get some number like so and if I do it for every single case so I get 0.1 point 0.1 times 24 times cosine of 53 I will get where the horizontal distance is and if I do it the same 0.1 into the t's keep in mind there is two t's for each one I can get the next y value so if I was to do 0.1 times 24 times sine of 53 oh, I'm running out of space minus one half 32 0.1 squared plus 4.75 I will get the y value once I get my x and y I'll go ahead and plot them and you should come up with the following so something like this these are your x's and these will be your Wise. So you're going to go ahead and plot each point. So I get x is 0.14, so something like this in my one point. And then 6.5 up, 6.5 up looks like so. And then at 0, it was height of 4.75, so something like this. And I keep on doing that. So if, and then make sure you keep this one, because this will tell you everything. I'm sorry, uh, the next one. This one right here. And we can see that when it's this magic number, it is 10 feet high, but it's 11.73. So you should have had something like this. If you plot every single point, and you can go ahead and see that he does not make the basket because this is our basketball rim. This is our backboard. And he pretty much airballs this shot. So he does not does not make the shot okay. um, so before I go to this part uh, I gave you two options so you could either do the semi algebra approach or you can do the subbing in x uh, your t's into x's and y's but you need to be very careful because this, I know in class a lot of us wanted to do this one right here. Um, but it, take, it, took, it takes way too much time. This one, if you go ahead and graph one with regarding what you need, you can find out what t-value you need exactly and then substitute and you get a pretty quick answer. Uh, the other approach, the table approach, is pretty nice because it shows you exactly how everything looks like. Okay, now... If you wanted to find uh, additional applications, so if we know this ball will eventually come to, to the ground, look like a parabola, and ignoring it every time it bounces back, you know, like a basketball, um, can we find the max height? Well, think about that. If we can find out where the height is zero, so when y equals zero, um, we can find out the entire length it traveled, right, at some time. And how do we find the height? Well, you get the time a from b. And you divide it by 2, so A divided by B for the time, um, that equals 0, and you can find the max height also. Okay, um, also guys, you can go ahead and eliminate the parameter and still do the same thing. Okay. Now, for homework, guys, you can do any approach that you want. The guys are playing the same basketball court. You got Nate, you got Shaq, you got Jordan. This is due on Tuesday. Uh, this is due on Tuesday, and I don't mind what approach you use. You can use the algebra approach, or you can use the table approach. Either one is fine with me. And that's pretty much all the lesson that we learned. Thank you. Bye.